So good evening to all of you. Hello. So now let's start. So first of all, in this lecture, I will discuss about the different properties of the Riemann stages integral which we have discussed in the previous session. So in this session, we basically discuss about what is the main properties of the Riemann stages integral and how we use these properties into the different types of the theorems. So first of all, so first of all, we, discuss about what are the properties of the integral. Mm -hmm. So in the previous lecture, in the previous lecture, mm -hmm. we discuss about the RS integral. RS mm -hmm. demand stages integral. So what is the demand stages integral? First of all, recall for five minutes to what we have gone in the previous class. So basically, in the previous class, I will discuss about what is the Riemann stages integral. What is the different theorems based on this? How we will modify it? How we will cover it? So basically, Riemann stages integral is the integration of alpha if we suppose alpha be a monotonically engaging function of first comma b. So for each partition p of the comma b, in upper integration and lower integration is equal to the integral part of the function. So this is called the Riemann stages. Now, in this session, now in this session, we will discuss about the properties of the R S integral. Properties of the R S integral. So first of all. If suppose f1 belongs to R alpha and f2 belongs to R on post A comma B. Suppose करिए कि f1 जो है R alpha से belong कर रहा है, f2 जो है वो R alpha से belong कर रहा है on post interval A comma. Then f1 plus f2 belongs to If F1 belongs to R alpha and F2 belongs to R alpha on post A comma B, then F1 plus F2 belongs to R alpha and CF belongs to R. Okay. And CF belongs to R. So, first of all, if F1 is any function, if F1 is any function and it is a Riemann stages function, F2 is also a Riemann stages function. On close take comma b, then they are sum. F1 plus F2, this sum. F1 plus F2 is always belongs to Riemann stages. Second one is the scalar. Scalar multiplication. This is a this is a C, which is a constant. C is a C is a constant. 
So this constant into function f belongs to R alpha, meaning thereby this is demand still just integral. So if f is a if f is a remand still just integral, then their scalar multiplication with any of the digit, positive, negative, anything, any type of the constant. Constant into the remand still just integral is always a remand still just integral. So if f1 and f2 are remand still just integral, then their addition is uh, a remand still just integral, and their scalar multiplication with any of the constant is also a remand still just integral. Now, if we operate this remand integration f1 plus f2 d alpha, then integration from a to b f1 d alpha and this integration plus a integral a to b f2 d alpha. And in a similar manner, the scalar multiplication of any number with the function f is equal to c into integral multiple of integration a to b f d alpha. Okay. So we apply the integration from this part. Suppose we apply the integration from this part and this is a to b. This is a to b. Okay. So if this is a to b, then their integration, we calculate their integration part by part. Okay. Now, this is the next property. So, in this slide, we discuss about if any function f1 is less than or equal to f2x on closed interval k, comma b, then if f1x is less than or equal to f2x on closed interval a, comma b, then integral a to b f1 d alpha is less than or equal to integral a to b f2 d okay. So if f one x is less than or equal to f two x on closed interval a comma b, then integral a to b f one d alpha is less than or equal to integral a to b f. Now, suppose any function, if any function is less than or equal to this one, suppose, suppose any function, any function means it is minus one and something else. Minus one is always less than or equal to one. So if we calculate this function, this is the constant function. Okay. So if we evaluate this function over the interval closed interval a comma b, then this inequality falls. So if the function is monotonically increasing, So uh, the video recording and slides are not uploaded in LMS. Can we get the videos and slides uploaded, please? No idea have also the same issue. So I will resolve this issue on Monday, OK? So if the administration says that, then I will upload the video and recording both, OK? So that you can visualize it on your LMS portal. Okay, so you wait for tomorrow. Okay, now, so if the function f1 is less than or equal to f2, so if a function f1x is less than or equal to f2x, then their integral is also less than or equal to f2x, less than or equal to f2x. So this is a B property. In property C, what is C? If f belongs to R alpha, if f is a demand stage integral on closed interval a comma b, and if C is any point which lies between a to b, then f belongs to R alpha, then f belongs to R alpha on a comma c and on c comma b also. So first of all, understand this line. If f belongs to R alpha, if f is any Riemann Stelzius integral, which is defined on a closed interval a comma b, and if a point c lies between this, these two points between the interval, if point c lies between the point a and b, then 
a f is also a Riemann Stieltjes integral on the interval a into c into the interval c into b in both the intervals. So mainly, if f is a Riemann Stieltjes integral on closed interval a comma b, then if we divide this interval into a two points into a two sub intervals, then f is also a Riemann Stieltjes integral on these sub intervals. Okay, and this integrability is defined as this a to c. F T alpha and this is C to B F T alpha is equal to integral A to B F D alpha. Okay. So in this slide, in this point, we concluded that what is the integration between the sub interval. So first of all, we evaluate the integral on the whole interval and then evaluate the integral on this. Sub interval. Then both the, the both the integrals are equal. Now in a deep part, what is the deep part? So deep part is that if f belongs to R alpha on closed interval a comma b, and if f is any Riemann Stieltjes integral on a closed interval a comma b, and if mod of f x is less than or equal to m on closed interval a comma b, then then if mod of f x is less than or equal to m. So what is this point? So this point says that if f is a Riemann Stieltjes integral on closed interval a comma b, and if f x is a bounded function also on closed interval a comma b. So this denotes the bounded function. Okay. So this is a bounded function on closed interval a comma b. Then this integration says that the in the modulus value of integral a to b f d alpha is always less than or equal to m alpha b minus alpha. Meaning thereby, if fx is a bounded function on closed interval a comma b, and this m is any positive value. Okay, this m is any positive value. So this is a bounded function. How we evaluate the modulus value of a Riemann Stieltjes integral? So this is a this is a modulus value. Okay, so this is a modulus value. And this is the integration part. So integration part is always less than or equal to that quantity m into alpha b minus alpha. I. Alpha b minus alpha is a what is the alpha b minus alpha? I? So alpha is a, any function which is a monotonically increasing. So monotonically increasing means this function, this function, this, and this. So anywhere anywhere alpha b minus alpha so suppose this point is alpha a. this point is alpha a. and this point is alpha b okay so the integration of the modulus value of integral of a to b f del d alpha is always bounded function and which is bounded by m into alpha b minus. Okay, so if f is a Riemann Stieltjes integral, f is a bounded integration, then the modulus value of integral a to b f alpha is always less than or equal to m into alpha b minus. So by theorem, f belongs to r. By theorem, f belongs to r. <coughs> now, we move the next properties. Suppose f is any function, f belongs to r alpha 1, f belongs to r alpha, then f belongs to r alpha 1 plus alpha. How? Suppose this is a this is an alpha function which is monotonically increasing as I we have discussed in the previous class. This is a monotonically increasing function, and f is any function. f is any function. Okay. Suppose this we have take any two curves alpha one alpha two. This is suppose alpha one. This is a take alpha two. Okay. So if f belongs to R alpha one, this f belongs to that point, this point, f belongs to r alpha 2, this uh, curve, then f belongs to r alpha 1 plus alpha. Okay, 
So if f belongs to this curve, then f belongs to this curve. Okay. Then f, then f is belongs to R alpha one plus alpha. Meaning thereby R is Riemann Stelges. F is a Riemann Stelges integral on both the curve alpha one plus alpha. Okay. And the integration of that function f into d alpha 1 plus alpha 2 is equal to the integration of a to b f of d alpha 1 plus integration a of b d alpha 2. Meaning thereby the value of this integral, meaning thereby the value of this integral is evaluated by evaluating the integration part of the first function f and plus integration of the second function f onto d alpha 2. Okay, so this gives the summation form of that type of the integral. So first of all, we calculate the f on alpha 1 and then we calculate f on alpha 2. Okay, so this is a Riemann Stelges integral. Now, suppose if f, f e belongs to r alpha and c is a positive constant. If f belongs to r alpha and c is a positive constant, then f belongs to r alpha and, okay? f belongs to r alpha and suppose this is a positive constant c okay if f is a riemann stelges integral c is a positive constant and f belongs to r alpha okay if f belongs to r alpha c is a positive constant then cf also this is a cf then cf also belongs to r alpha so if c is any positive constant positive means plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, and so on. And f is any Riemann Stelges integral. Then cf belongs to r alpha. And this integral a to b cf d alpha is equal to c into integral f of d alpha. Okay. So these are the properties of the Riemann Stelges integral. Okay. So first of all, we recall these properties, okay. And after that, we will move the next section. So first of all, if f1 and f2 are two Riemann Stelges in a uh, function, then their sum is also a Riemann Stelges integral. Constant multiple of the Riemann Stelges integral is also a Riemann Stelges integral. If f1x and f2x are two functions in such a way that f1x is less than or equal to f2x, then their Riemann Stelges integral is also less than or equal to f2 dl. This is a property. The third property says that if f belongs to if f f is any Riemann Stelges integral on closed interval a comma b, and if we divide the interval into two sub intervals, then the Riemann Stelges integral also. Uh, also remain integra integrable on that sub intervals. Okay. Third point is says that if f belongs to R alpha and f is a bounded function, then then the Riemann Stelges integral is also a bounded function. This shows that bounded function. This is a bounded function. The property E says that if f belongs to R alpha. And if f belongs to r alpha 2, then f belongs to r alpha 1 plus r and their respective integration. The, uh, this part says that if f belongs to r alpha, if f is any Riemann Stelges integral, c is any positive constant, then c into f, the product of c into f belongs to r alpha. Okay. Integration a to b c f d alpha is equal to c integration a to b f d alpha. I hope these properties are clear. Now we will move the theorems which we will based on the properties of the Riemann Stelges integral. Now, what is the theorem statement? What is the statement of the theorem? This theorem says that if f belongs to R alpha and g belongs to R alpha on close to a comma, okay. Then first f g belongs to r alpha, mod of f belongs to r alpha, and mod of f t alpha, this belongs to this belongs to. So if f belongs to r alpha and g belongs to r alpha on 
close to a comma b then their product belongs to r alpha okay first statement it says that if f belongs if f is any function which is a riemann stelzius integral g is any function which is a riemann stelzius integral defined on close to a comma b then their product is also a riemann stelzius integral meaning thereby if x comma 1 by x if x comma 1 by x is a riemann stelzius integral then their product their product is x into 1 by x so this function is cancelled out then this one this also belongs to none this also belongs to okay so if f belongs to r alpha g belongs to r alpha on to integral a comma then f c belongs to r alpha then their product is also belongs to r alpha if if mod of f belongs to r alpha meaning thereby the modulus value of f is also a riemann stelzius integral then the modulus value of riemann stelzius integral is always less than or equal to integration of mod of f d so this property holds this property holds so this is a very most important property which is the, mod the modulus value is always less than or equal to integration of the mod of f d okay. so the statement says that if f and g are two function which are riemann stelzius integral of the of a comma b then their product is also a riemann stelzius integral if mod of f belongs to r alpha then the modulus value of riemann stelzius integral is less than or equal to integration of the modulus of f d okay Modulus value of integration is also always less than or equal to integration of the modulus. Modulus value of a modulus value of integration is always less than or equal to integration of the modulus value. Okay. This statement this says that. Now we see the proof. What is the proof of this function? So first of all, we take if i t is equal to t square, if i t is equal to t square so by theorem if i t is equal to t square then by theorem f square belongs to r alpha and if f belongs to okay suppose we we consider a function i t is equal to t square so by theorem if f belongs to r alpha then f square also belongs to r alpha this is a theorem theorem says that if x is any function which is belongs to r alpha which is a Riemann stages R. This is R. If F if X belongs to R alpha, if X belongs to R alpha, then X square also belongs to. This is a this is a theorem state. So, by using the statement of this theorem, the identity, we define our identity. We define an identity. This is a for fg is equal to f plus c ka whole square, f plus c whole square minus of f minus. So, we define. First of all, we take this f, f plus c ka whole square is, what is this f plus c square is? f plus c square is f square f square plus g square okay plus 2x plus 2x okay and if we again define f minus c whole square f minus c whole square so f minus c whole square is f square 
एफ स्क्वायर प्लस जी स्क्वायर एफ स्क्वायर प्लस जी स्क्वायर माइनस टू एफ माइनस टू ओके सो इफ वी सब्सट्रैक्ट दिस फंक्शन दिस टू फंक्शन इफ सब्सट्रैक्ट देन इफ यू सब्सट्रैक्ट दिस माइनस दिस माइनस एंड दिस सो दिस प्लस एफ एंड दिस माइनस एफ कैंसिल आउट दिस प्लस जी एंड दिस माइनस सी कैंसिल आउट सो इफ वी एड दिस दिस टू फंक्शन इफ यू सब्सट्रैक्ट दिस टू फंक्शन देन इज इज इक्वल टू टू एफ जी एंड प्लस टू एफ सी इज इक्वल टू फोर एफ ओके सो फोर एफ सी वी वी इवेल्युएट फ्रॉम द आइडेंट सो अगेन अगेन वी मूव द स्टेटमेंट ऑफ द थ्योरम स्टेटमेंट सेज दैट इफ एफ बिलोंग्स टू आर ओफ एंड जी बिलोंग्स टू आर मीनिंग दियर बाय एफ एंड जी बोथ हाफ एम स्टेजेस इन दी and by using the properties if f belongs to r alpha g belongs to r alpha then their sum is also belongs to r alpha we prove this one if f1 belongs to r alpha f2 belongs to r alpha then their sum f1 plus f2 also belongs to r alpha, r alpha. okay so by using this property we says that if f belongs to r alpha g belongs to r alpha then their sum f plus c also belongs to r alpha okay and their their subtraction their difference is also belongs to r alpha so if f plus c belongs to r alpha f minus c belongs to r alpha and by using this theorem if f belongs to r alpha then f square also belongs to r alpha so by using this theorem if f plus c belongs to r alpha then their square is also belongs to r alpha so this function belongs to this function belongs to where this function also belongs to r alpha This function also belongs to R, okay? And this f minus g also belongs to R. Okay, so this belongs to R. This belongs to R. Meaning thereby, this if left if right hand side belongs to R alpha, then left hand side also belongs to R. okay so the product of the two function is also a riemann stages so we prove this theorem by using three things first of all we use the uh, identity a plus b whole square a minus b whole square so by subtracting these two identities we evaluate for f g okay now using the properties if f1 belongs to r alpha f2 belongs to r alpha then they are sum and their difference is also belongs to r alpha then using this property after that we use the uh, theorem if f belongs to r alpha then f square also belongs to r alpha so using these three condition using these three properties we prove that the product of the two riemann stages integral is also a riemann stages integral okay so this completes the proof this complete the proof this complete the proof now if we take phi t is equal to modulus value of t if we take phi t is equal to modulus value of t by theorem mod of f belongs to r By the mod of f belongs to R because it is given because it is given so mod of f belongs to R and we prove this part how we will prove this part C choose C is equal to plus minus one then C of f del t alpha is always a greater than or equal to zero because f is a what is f f is a monotonically increasing function f is a monotonically increasing function this is f so f is always a 
positive quantity this always increasing function so this property holds okay this property so after using this property we also says that the modulus value of integration f of d alpha is equal to c of d alpha is equal to c f of d alpha is always less than or equal to how how this thing is possible how this thing is possible so first of all here it is right that c just look here c integration yeah. Okay. So integration of this C F D L. Suppose this we put C is equal to plus minus. So this is plus minus one, and this is integration. Okay. So if you take the modulus value of this, so if you take the modulus value of this, then this minus also becomes plus and plus is also a plus. So modulus value change this function into this part. Integration of this mod of FDL. Okay. So the modulus value of integration of FDL is equal to C of integration of FDL is equal to integration of C FDL, which is also a less than or equal to. So first of all, you remember this, which is equal to this, okay? And this C, if we take C into inside of the integral, then this C is with this, okay? And what is this inequality says? Why it is less than R? Because if we put the C, value of C is a minus one, then minus one, Minus of integral f t alpha is always less than or equal to modulus value because modulus value is always a positive. So positive quantity is always greater than or equal to the negative quantity. Okay. So in case if we put minus sign to this place, then it is always less than. And if we put plus sign, then it is equal. To. So this inequality holds for plus and minus sign. So first of all, this holds because of plus minus and modulus value. Secondly, if we Put this C into the integral in, into the sign into in the sign of the integration, then C F D alpha. And this C F D alpha is always a less than or equal to mod of. So this property shows that C F is also is always less than or equal to modulus value of F. Because modulus value is a greater than or equal to the negative value of the function. Because if you take C negative, then modulus value becomes positive. So it is always greater. And if you take C positive, then F into F. F is equal to F. So there is no problem. Okay. So C F is always less than or equal to modulus value of F, where C is a positive or negative quantity. Okay. So this statement says that this part. And the theorem is al also a says that this part. Modulus value of integration a to b f t alpha is always less than or equal to integration a to b f modulus value of t alpha. So we prove this by taking c positive constant. So first of all, we define this thing. We take the we take the left hand side. We take the left hand side. Okay. And this left hand side, if we multiply c, then there is no problem because the modulus value of c is positive. And if you take this c is in instant. Uh, internal the sign of the integration then this thing happens and this thing is always less than to this quantity 
So if we create this part with this part, then the theorem statement is true. Then the theorem statement is true. So I hope this theorem is the both the part of this theorem is clear to all of you. Now we will move the uh, next theorem, which is very important and very necessary. What is the integration and differentiation of the Riemann stages in here? So basically, integration and differentiation of the Riemann stages integral is very important in point of view that. Integration and differentiation is also a part of this Riemann stages. So first of all, we define the f function function, and we define the integration of this function on various types of the intervals various types of conditions tion this is a function this is a function and after defining the function under the different types of the properties So first of all, we define a function. After that, we define how it is a Riemann stages integral. How it is a Riemann stages function. So where we define different types of terminologies, how we will prove this. And after that, we define the different types of the properties, such that if f1 and f2 are Riemann stages integral, then f1 plus f2 is also a Riemann stages integral okay the scalar uh, multi uh, the scalar multiple of the Riemann stages integral is also a Riemann stages integral the modulus value of the integration of f d alpha is always less than or equal to the integration of the modulus value of f d alpha this is very important property and by theorem we also prove that if f and g are Riemann stages integral then their product f into g is also a Riemann stages integral so this type of the things we we have already covered okay so in this lecture we have covered properties functions and many more after that if if the function is defined then in this section we also define what is the integration and what is the differentiation of this function how how the differentiation and integration of the Riemann stages functions also a Riemann stages integral. So how the properties of the differentiation and how the properties of the integration is valid for the Riemann stages integral and how we establish a relation between the differentiation and integration of the Riemann stages integral. Okay. So differentiation and integration is also exist in Riemann stages integral and the, the Riemann stages integral have different types of the theorem which are based on the differentiation and integration part of the real analysis. Okay. Now, so first theorem says that, what is the theorem? Theorem says that let F belongs to R. If F is any Riemann, if f is any Riemann stages integral, okay, if f is any Riemann stages integral on closed A comma B for x lies between A to B, if f is any Riemann integration on closed interval A comma B and x is any point between A to B, then capital Fx is equal to A to F Ft. See, 
if f is an Riemann integration on closed interval a comma b, we suppose we uh, have a point x between a to b. So capital F x is equal to integration of a to x f t dt. Then, then capital F is a continuous on closed a comma b. Then capital F is a continuous on closed a comma b. First of all, further move. If f is continuous at a point x naught belongs to x naught of closed interval a comma b, then f is differentiable at x naught. Then f is differentiable at x naught. Okay. So here the property says that suppose f is a Riemann integration, x lies between one closed interval a comma b, x is any point between a to b. Then if we evaluate the integration of f between the points A into X. This. If, if we evaluate the integration of F between the points A to X, then if we obtain any function, suppose, suppose, suppose we put integration this in such a 1 into X. 1 into x. We take the limit 1 into x and the function ft ft is considered 1. Constant function. Constant function is always a demand scale just integral. So dt. Okay. Now, if you solve this function then this becomes x minus 1. Then this becomes x minus. Okay. If you solve this function then this x minus 1. And if you solve this function, then this becomes x minus 1, and this x minus 1 is nothing but capital X. This is a capital. Okay, so what are the different properties of capital F? First of all, capital F is a continuous on to stick up. Capital F is a continuous. Continuous means x minus 1 is a continuous. Okay, first property. Furthermore, if f is continuous at a point x0, suppose this point, this function is continuous at a point x0, x0 is equal to 1. Then f is differentiable at x0. Okay, so if this function is differentiable at point 0 or 1, then f is differentiable at x0, meaning thereby this f dash x0, f dash x0 is, what is f dash x0? f dash x0 is f dash x is 1, f dash x is 1. And if we put any for any point, suppose f dash x is 0. x0, let me take x0 is 0. So f dash 0 is f dash 0 is 1. And we also suppose that what is the function? We also suppose fx is equal to 1. We also suppose that fx is equal to 1. fx is equal to 1. Now, if we put this 0 on this place, f of 0 because we take the uh, x0 value 0. So f0 is equal to also 1. Okay. f0 is also 1. So f0 is also 1. So by this theorem, f dash x0 is equal to x0, f0 is equal, is equal to 1, which is equal to f dash 0. So I hope this statement uh, is clear to all of you. Okay. First of all, f is Riemann integrable. Second, if any point x lies between a to b and we define a function from a to x, ft dt, then it is equal to the function fx. And this function fx is uh, first of all continuous. Second of all, if it's continuous at a point x0, then this function becomes a primitive of fx. In thereby, the differentiation of f dash x0 is equal to f of x0. Okay.
So this term is used in many places. Uh, here we find the primitive value of the function where we use this term. So now we see the proof of this term. Now, what is the proof says? Since f belongs to R, since f belongs to R, meaning thereby f is a Riemann integration. F is a bounded because every Riemann function, every Riemann integrable integration is a bounded function. This is a necessary condition. What is the two necessary conditions of the Riemann state as Riemann's Riemannian integration? Riemannian integration is first of all function is bounded. Second one is the interval is finite. First property says that f is bounded. F is bounded. These two properties are very necessary. F is bounded. Second one is the interval is finite. The interval. The interval is finite. Okay. Interval. The interval is finite. Okay, so these two properties of the Riemann integration, if a function if is a Riemann integrable, then first of all, it is bounded. Second one is, it is a defined on a finite interval. The intervals must be a bounded. The interval must be a bounded or the finite interval. So, since f is a Riemann integration, f is a bounded, suppose, bounded means modulus value of f is less than or equal to some quantity n for t lies between a to t. If suppose there are two points x and y between the intervals a to t, between the interval a to t, then first of all define f y minus f x is equal to this x y f t t t is less than or equal to m y minus x. How this is possible? We have from where this quantity came. We move the statement f x is equal to f t t t. So if we define f y minus f x, so this becomes f. What is the value of f y minus f x? A to y. F y means a to y f t t t. Then f x means a to x f t t t. So this becomes the value x to y f t t t. Okay, and this modulus value, this modulus value is nothing but less than or equal to m y minus x because we studied that the modulus value the modulus of the function is always a bounded modulus of the integration is always a bounded integral because we uh, studied this property from here this this property Modulus value of integration a to b f t alpha is always less than or equal to m alpha p minus. So from using this property, we write this function. From using this property, we write this line m y minus. Okay. Now, given if silent positive, if f if f silent positive is any number. Epsilon positive in any number, then modulus value of f y minus x is always less than epsilon. It is possible because of the mod of f y minus f x is less than epsilon. Okay, so suppose given epsilon positive, we operate this epsilon positive in this place. Okay, so. This mod of f y minus f x is less than to epsilon. Okay. 
Now, modulus value of y minus x is also less than 2 epsilon by m because this divided by, if we take y, y minus x, then this divided by m. Okay. So, first of all, this mod of f y minus f x is less than 2 epsilon whenever, whenever mod of y minus x is less than 2 epsilon. And what is the what this property says that this property says that the function is so what is the continuity of the function if modulus value of f y minus f x is less than r two epsilon then modulus value of y minus x is less than two epsilon by m and we denote this by delta this is delta so uh, the uh, uh, the definition of the continuity the uh, definition of the continuous function says that if a function f is continuous on a closed interval a comma b and if there are two points x minus x comma y lies between a to b then the modulus value of fx minus fy is always less than or equal to epsilon whenever jab kabhi bhi mod, mod of y minus x is less than to it less than to meaning thereby how are the distance y minus x covered Suppose this y and this x. So the modulus value of these two points is always less than to delta whenever f of y minus x is less than to. So this is the property of the continuity. This is the definition of the continuous. Okay. So using this property, using this pro definition, we prove that f is a continuous function. So we prove the first part by using this property and using a property of the Riemann stages integral. We prove the first part, which says that f is a continuous function. Now, now suppose f is a continuous at x naught. Suppose we suppose that f is a continuous at x naught. Okay. So Suppose f is continuous at any point x naught and given epsilon positive, choose delta positive such that we use the definition of the continuous function. How it is possible? Mod of f t minus f x naught is less than to epsilon if t minus x naught is less than to delta and t lies between it. T lies between it. Okay. So suppose s lies between x0 minus delta to x0 and t lies between x0 to x0 plus delta. Suppose this is a line. This denote x0 minus delta. This denote x0 and this denote x0 plus delta. Okay, now here some point s. Here there is a some point s, and here some point. Okay, so this is x naught minus delta. S lies between x naught minus delta to x naught, and t lies between x naught to x naught plus. Delta. Now. Now, in a similar manner, we define to these two points S to T, S and T between the interval closed interval A. In a similar manner, if you define this interval is closed, suppose this is A and this is B. So here lies between S and in some condition S is equal to A and this is T. It is possible. First of all, understand the configuration of intervals. So how will you define? This is S, T, lies between the uh, uh, two points of the closed interval A and B. 
Now, this is modulus value of f t minus f s upon t minus s and minus of s. How we will write this? Suppose this is f t is a function, f s is a function, their difference is also a function, and we divide t minus f. This is some quantity. This is some quantity. So overall, this is a function. Overall, this is nothing but a function. And this is a function at some point fx naught. Now, this is 1 upon t minus f and this integration has to t. F u minus fx naught t. F u minus fx naught d. So we take this value. We take this value outside of this outside of this and the integration of s to t f u d u what is the meaning of this integration of s to t f u d u means integration of this x to y f t dt ah this thing. f s minus s t f s minus f t is equal to integration from s to t f u d u so by using this property we write this thing f u minus fx naught t u and the modulus value of this t this thing the modulus value of this thing is always less than or equal, less than equal to some epsilon less than equal to some epsilon okay then this value is less than to some epsilon now by using the properties of the differentiation of the function what is the differentiable function differentiable function is the function at a point x naught if fx minus fx naught upon x minus x naught belongs to the interval close interval a comma belongs to close interval a comma so by using this properties ft minus fs t minus s minus fx naught is less than to epsilon we prove that the f dash x naught is equal to x naught because this part this part is nothing but f dash x naught f dash and this is fx naught. So if less than to epsilon, then f dash x naught is equal to f dash x naught is equal to okay. Now we prove one by one both the part that first of all f is continuous on closed interval a comma b. And if f is continuous at a point f, then it is a differentiable at that point. So first of all, we understood what is the form says. So we prove by taking the function f t is equal to one and understood what is the theorem statement. After that, uh, we using the properties of the Riemann integration that if f is bounded, then uh, if f is a Riemann is bounded also, the modulus value of f is equal to its m for t lies between and this mod of f y minus f x is equal to the integration of that thing. So we prove this one. Now we prove the second, the very important part of this fundamental theorem of calculus. This is a very important theorem, fundamental theorem of calculus. So if f belongs to R. If f belongs to R on closed A comma B, and if there is a differentiable function f on closed interval A comma B, such that f dash is equal to f, then suppose if f is any Riemann integration on closed interval A comma B, suppose a Riemann integration on closed interval A comma B, and if there is a differentiable function capital F on closed A comma B. Such that f dash is equal to such that f dash is first of all we suppose f is a demand integration and second one we suppose there is a differentiable function capital F on closed A such that f dash is equal to such that f dash is equal to then 
first of all, integration of A to B F to X, F X to X is equal to F B minus F A. F B minus F A. So integration from A to B F X D X is equal to F B minus F A. F B minus F A. So if F belongs to R on post state gamma B, and if there is a differentiable function capital F on post state gamma B such that F dash is equal to F, then integration of A to B FX dx is equal to F B minus F. Okay? No problem is there because the theorem says that because the theorem says that F dash is equal to F. So if we apply the integration of that order, so if we apply the integration of this part, A to B, then what is the value? This value becomes F T. F B minus F B B minus F B minus. Now let if some positive be given, choose the partition P X naught comma X one up to dot 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 X n of closed interval A comma B so that so that U P F comma uh, U P comma F minus L P F L P comma F is less than epsilon. If T I belongs to X I minus one comma X I such that for I is equal to one two up to dot dot n thus thus. Suppose, see the proof of this term. Let its sign positive be given, any of the sign positive given, choose a partition. Partition means the dividison of the interval into finite number of the subpoints. So divide the partition. So that we, we by the demand, demand integration, uh, Riemannian definitions, u p comma f minus l p comma f is less than to epsilon. If any t i belongs to x i minus 1 comma x i such that for i is equal to 1 to 2 dot dot n, thus, thus, this is a summation i is equal to 1 to n fti delta xi, fti delta xi is equal to fb minus f, is equal to fb minus f. This is a possible, this is a possible, no problem. By theorem, by theorem, if we take the integration of these things, take the integration of these things, then this summation reduces to the this type of the integral. This type of the thing. If we take the supremum, supremum or infimum. Okay. So first of all, if we take supremum, the supremum value is from integration. Integration A to B, F B minus F. If you if you take the infimum, then this also becomes the integration of that thing. So the F B minus F A minus of integral A to B F X T S is less than two epsilon. Since this holds for every epsilon, it this inequality this inequality shows for every epsilon. Shows for every epsilon. So shows for every epsilon. So suppose this becomes zero in any positive condition that needs an positive. So F B minus F A is always equal to the integration of A to B F X integration of A to B F X. So this is a very important theorem, which is also called the fundamental form of the calculus and it belongs to the primitives. So how it is how it is uh, applicable on that. So first of all, if we approach in any of the theorems, so first of consider the examples. 
because example is a most important thing. Example is a most important thing for proving a theorem. Example. Is the most important thing for proving. So first of all, go to the example. Second, go to the problems. You can go to the problems. Third theorem. What theorem says? The statement of the theorem. Statement of the theorem. This three things are very important. Statement. Statement of the theorem. Always remember. So, first of all, take some examples and solve it. Take some problems and solve it by using the statements of the theorem. And you can also verify the statement of the theorem by taking some examples so that all the statements and all the proofs are clear to all of you. So I hope that uh, today's session is very beneficial to all of you and all of you are understand the concept of the today's session and all of the statements of the theorem are clear to all of you. All the properties of Riemann stereosis integral are always clear to all of you. So in next session, uh, I will uh, explain the uniform convergence and it's different types of the point-wise convergence, different types of the properties. So, thank you very much for listening me carefully. And uh, I will meet you on the next Sunday, same time, 6 to 7 p.m. So, thank you very much. Thank you, all of you, Kirtika.